Hi guys, this is Megan with the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I'm doing my 16 week pregnancy update. I've got my phone here for all my notes because I have the worst pregnancy brain and I will definitely not remember any of the stuff on my phone. So. so if you guys are new here to my channel, I am 16 weeks along with our third baby. This is my third pregnancy and we are planning a third home birth as well. I've had home births with my other two children and so I like to just keep you guys updated every couple weeks or so on my pregnancy symptoms and they seem to be videos that you guys really like so I've been really enjoying doing them because I love talking about pregnancy. I'm a little bit of a pregnancy and birth junkie so I can get a little long and rambly in these sorts of videos because it's something I just love to talk about. So I've been feeling pretty good these last couple weeks. I have, I don't think I've mentioned this in my other updates that I've been keeping up with doing my yoga during this pregnancy, which is something that was a really big goal for me. I worked out, I, I mean, I didn't work out at all my first two pregnancies. And by the end, you know, you get like big and sore and it's really stiff and I couldn't put my socks on and all that stuff. And then especially with my son's pregnancy, my second pregnancy, I kept having my pubic bone go out of placement and just a lot of soreness in my pelvis area, which can be normal, I know, but I'm hoping that with keeping up with yoga and just keeping myself flexible and limber and just able to do more things that maybe I won't get so uncomfortable and I'll maybe still be able to put my socks on for more of the pregnancy. So I've been doing yoga with my cousin, Megan. She comes over in the morning because we live like two blocks away. It's really nice to have someone come over and do it with me because otherwise I probably wouldn't actually do it. <laughs> it's like forcing me to actually do it every day. So we try to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So four days a week. Luke is off on Fridays and so I don't have her come over on the days that he's home. And then generally on the days he's home I forget and we're just busy doing stuff. So I generally do yoga four days a week which I feel like that's pretty good. It's not super re realistic for me to do much more than that. We've been doing yoga workouts from a YouTube channel called Boho Beautiful, which I absolutely love her yoga videos. I've just been kind of modifying for pregnancy, like not doing too many twisting poses because I don't want to do anything bad to my ab muscles. Stop scratching me. I wish she had some actual like pregnancy yoga videos because I'd like to have a bit more direction on as I'm getting bigger like what I should be avoiding and what I should be doing more of. So if you guys have any recommendations for yoga workouts that are specifically for pregnancy, let me know because I would love to try some more. I've also been doing squats every day which is another super important workout I feel like for pregnancy. I walk a lot in general, I'm just constantly walking because I have two little kids, but I try to do 50 to 100 squats a day just to keep my legs really strong and make sure I can get into a squatting position because the squatting position has been one of the most comfortable positions for birth for me for both of the babies that I've had. So I find it's really important to do squats to the whole pregnancy. I talked about in my last update that I've been so distracted that I've been forgetting that I'm pregnant, which is ridiculous. I've still been quite busy. It's slowed down a little bit because we've gotten most of our extra stuff to the storage unit. So not as much of that, just trying to catch up on business work at this point. So I've been a little less busy and I've been less distracted so I've actually been noticing the baby move during the day which is always so fun. For a while I could only feel the baby at night when I would hold really still but now there's more times during the day that I can actually feel them. And for the most part it's like such such a weird feeling when I do feel the baby move because it's like this fluttery, like kind of like butterflies. It's really hard to explain to someone that hasn't actually felt it because whenever I talk to any other moms that have been pregnant before, they're like, oh yeah, I totally know what you're talking about. And I try to explain it to anyone else and they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's not totally like butterflies. It just feels like my stomach's like unsettled. I don't know how to explain it, but it's this really interesting feeling. And I know it's the baby because I felt this before, but it's really fun to feel. And I've sort of been able to, if I lay down and feel my stomach with my hands, I can normally tell where the baby is it seems like the baby likes to lay along the left side of my uterus. I've been noticing my uterus just feels very sore by the end of the day. Like not like Braxton Hicks, like just kind of hurts. 
it feels very tired in general. Like it, it just feels tired, <laughs> which is understandable having three back-to-back -back pregnancies. But like the end of the day, the, how sore it gets is like, when it first started happening, it was a little bit concerning because it felt like not anything I felt with my other pregnancies. Just like a sore muscle, but my uterus muscles, like not muscles that I normally feel unless I'm, you know what I mean? It's not like a contraction either. So I feel like it's probably just my uterus is actually tired from having several pregnancies. And I do a lot of stuff during the day. I'm always walking around. And so it gets a lot of exercise. So it's probably just really tired. I recently realized that I've been doing this weird thing where I hold my stomach muscles in for, I have no idea why. Like it's not normally something I do during pregnancy. Like I just kind of let it all out because I like having a big belly during pregnancy. It's something I more do when I'm not pregnant. I'll hold my ab muscles in just to not let myself have a pooch. <laughs> but I've never had it where I have to like consciously remind myself to relax my stomach when I'm pregnant. Like it's just been kind of weird. I don't know if it's just like I'm distracted and I forget that I'm pregnant and so I start holding it in out of habit. Or if maybe my core is not as strong and so my body feels like it has to like hold everything in more, I don't know. I'm really trying to remind myself not to because I've heard that chronically just holding your abs in can make you more prone to diastasis recti, the ab separation during pregnancy. So I've been trying not to, but it's actually really hard to remember not to. It's just a weird thing. Have you, any of you guys experienced accidentally holding your ab muscles in during pregnancy? Because it seems like kind of a random problem. I do have a midwife appointment in early April, so I will definitely be asking her about this when I go. It's my second appointment. I had one at nine weeks, and then I'll have that one again at, I don't know how many weeks I'll be. I guess I'll be about 19, 20 weeks when I see Sundano again. So I'm curious to see what she'll say about that issue and then also my uterus just being kind of sore. My varicose veins are officially back. With my first pregnancy I had zero problems with it. With my second pregnancy I got varicose veins on my vagina of all places in the middle of my pregnancy. It just felt like my vagina area just felt heavy. I actually thought Dimmy was going to fall out of me because it was just so heavy. But then when I asked my midwife, she said that is varicose veins, they just feel really tight and swollen and heavy so it can make it seem like, it's the same feeling where it feels like everything's just gonna fall out of your vagina. It's so weird. Varicose veins do run in my family, so that's why I've gotten them. And they'll get worse each pregnancy, which is unfortunate. And I will start to get them on my legs eventually as I get older. I'm just a little young now to start getting them on my legs. But they are officially back. I've started feeling that kind of varicose vein pressure down there and especially if I've been on my feet a lot if I feel them they feel really like lumpy and swollen so that's a little unfortunate but I was also expecting it, so I'm not shocked at all I talked about my last update that I've been terrible with remembering to take any supplements or vitamins I have since gotten quite a bit better I've been really trying to get back on track with that because I just my body feels like it needs the supplements so I actually Remember to take them most days. So I take a really high quality prenatal vitamin. It's the Pure Encapsulations brand. They're really high quality ingredients. My naturopath actually recommended these. She actually recommended most of the supplements I take, but I just, she will tell me what she wants me to take and then I'll try to find them on Amazon because they're usually cheaper on Amazon than what I can get from the naturopath doctor's office. I'm taking some herbal tinctures for my thyroid because I have Graves' disease. So. Right now I'm trying to take supplements to bring my thyroid down lower and then later in the pregnancy I'll have to take some to bring it back up because it will get low from pregnancy hormones. I take a curcumin supplement for thyroid as well, a glutathione for thyroid, acetyl L-carnitine. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right but that is also for thyroid. Most, uh, quite a few of these things are for the thyroid thing so they're not even things that anyone else is going to have to worry about taking. It's just specifically if you have high thyroid. I try to be really careful with my thyroid and make sure I get it under control so I don't have to take any sort of medication. I try to, that's why I have so many supplements that are geared towards thyroid. I want to get it under control with supplements and diet as much as possible and manage it with that and not have to deal with the medication. So that's why there's so many of those supplements. I also take a collagen supplement from Radiant Life. My nails have been feeling really thin lately. I really should probably find a biotin supplement as well. 
I have been taking a, uh, what's it called? Oh, calcium. My brain is dead. I've been taking a calcium supplement for my teeth because as you guys know, I've been having some teeth problems since pregnancy. I take vitamin C, vitamin D, just basic. I take those all the time, even when I'm not pregnant. I also take fermented cod liver oil, which is a really important thing to have, and then a really high quality probiotic supplement. So that is kind of a large amount of pills I have to take each day, but qu quite a bit of it is for my thyroid, which is not kind of a normal thing for everyone. And I do feel better when I take all of these supplements. So I'm pretty happy with the amount of things I'm taking right now and what things I'm taking. I will link all those down in the description box below if you guys are interested in trying any of them out yourselves. So also in my last update, I said that I was probably gonna try to get an appointment with another dentist to get x-rays soon on my teeth. I will link this update I keep talking about. It's my 14 week update. I'm referencing a lot of things I talked about in that 14 week update. So if you didn't see it, you should go watch it so you kind of know what I'm talking about. But I had mentioned I wanted to go get an x-ray now because my dentist that I want to see can't even see me until May. And just because I had a problem with my tooth and had to have it pulled, I'm worried that they'll get bad enough that I'll have to get it more pulled. So I just wanted to get it checked out now. <laughs> I was being impatient. So I actually got an appointment with the dentist that took the x-ray when they determined that that back tooth need to be pulled and praise god i don't need any more teeth pulled i was actually really worried about that i was like the teeth that hurt are like kind of more in the front and if i have to get those pulled it's going to be terrible like people will notice i was like so worried about that but none of them need to be pulled they're not too bad i do have some cavities but they're not bad at all there are some of them that he said you don't even really need to fill that just eat well and take good care of it and it shouldn't get any worse. So some of them are just really small like that. There are some that do need to be filled. So I have, I actually have all of the ones that need to be filled now. I have appointments for them to be filled before that other dentist can even have my consult appointment, which is ridiculous. So everything will already be dealt with by the time I see her. Again, I do want to establish care there, so I still will go. But I'm so thankful that it's just going to get dealt with and I know what's going on and it's not too bad. It's just some feelings. I can handle that. So that was a huge relief. I mean, obviously I'm not happy about having feelings or cavities, but after having a tooth pulled because the cavity got so bad, I'm very thankful that it just needs a filling. So now I think it's time to show you guys the bump. So here's the bump. It's looking pretty big. This is my absolute favorite comfy, cozy shirt from Pink Flesh Maternity. So I hope you guys enjoyed my 16 week pregnancy update. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I have a lot of new content coming out. Go over to my website and subscribe to my email list because that's where I update you guys on all the big things going on in our lives. And if you head over to my Instagram, that's where I post like every single day. So if you're wanting to see more of just our day to day lives, Instagram is the place to be. But again, thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye.